How particularly in a second procedure can your knowledge of artistry, Sarah, assist that density? It's vital. You need to have a, a thorough understanding of angles and direction and curl because we're working through existing hair. We're not working on a bald head. So theoretically, if our angles are off, we could do damage to your hair that you've got now. And we want to make sure we're spot on with our directions so you have 100% growth. She is so right. Jenny, I think the future is in very safe hands. I know it Thanks, is. Paul. <laughs> I know it is. With regard to making my decision, I don't need as much time as I did for the first procedure because I know all about you. I appreciate your artistry, the quality of your work, your safety, everything that you do, I love. So I'd like to press ahead. Will it be with the same team of people? Well, it will be within a large team because um, Sarah and I have been training the new generation of surgeons. And so we are very pleased to welcome a Dr. Alia and Dr. Zinn to our team. And they too will be, along with Sarah and myself, working on you. I'd like to talk a little bit about the future. Mm -hmm. What happens, say, I'm 50 now, in 15 years time, mm -hmm. if some of these side parts have dropped and maybe I'd like to have more and I'm mm. increasing my greed. Mm. Is there any potential for that? When we make a plan for your treatment, we always need to consider what's going to happen in the future. What you've had transplanted is going to be there forever and ever, but potentially you may lose more of your native hair. You know, you're a young man, you've got a, you know, hopefully another 50 years ahead of you. Thank you. And another 50 years of potential loss of those hairs. Now, we can use medications to help you hold on to those hairs. And they do work well, often for 10 to 15 years, but if it's written in your DNA that those hairs will fall out, they will. We can't stop that. So medications just postpone the inevitable. I call it your whole of life plan. So when that does happen, if your skin does have enough elasticity, and if you massage it, it probably will, then we can go back and top you up as needed. And that's but when you're going to have Dr. Sarah, Dr. Alia, and Dr. Zinn to take care of you, because I suggest we'll be out of an in pasture. <laughs> in 15 years time. Talking about being out in pasture, and I hope you have good pasturing. So do I. <laughs> you deserve <laughs> it. You work and have worked extremely hard. Your legacy is remarkable. It's obviously embodied in Sarah. How do you see the future? And how do you see the people that you've trained taking hair transplantation in Australia forward? The people I've trained are at the top of their game worldwide. These young doctors have spent over two years just mastering the artistic side of things. They understand that hair transplanting is not just a mechanical act. They understand the complexities of the artistry. And I'm, I'm very happy to know that the Australian consumer will have available this, this quality work. On top of that, we don't know what's go going to happen on the scientific side of things. You know, yes, there can be cloning. Yes, there can be stem cells. Have you any idea? I think eventually it will happen, but I'm not convinced it's going to happen in our lifetimes. Okay. But Paul, in 20 years, you'll always have me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I imagine over the many years that you've been working, you've trained a lot of people. What's outstanding about the three that you mentioned and those that are going to be working on me next week? They get it. You know, it w they understand the complexities of the artistry. When you have a medical brain, to actually train it to understand the needs for all these bits of artistry when it is the brain is basically wired for maths and science, it's very hard to do. I think essentially the whole concept of hair transplantation, so taking skin and transplanting it somewhere else, is incredibly simple. But to make it look beautiful is the really, really difficult part. Um, and that's where a lot of doctors fail. And so the future is with people who get it and people who understand the beauty of nature and can enhance it. 
if set balance between organisation and chaos that is nature and that's that's what you're bringing to the hair transplant and to me that sums up the Martinet technique really it does yes I'm back at the man cave for my hair transplant. It's my second procedure following a very successful transplant two and a half years ago. In fact, that went so well, I got hair greed. And now, like Oliver Twist, I want more. If you're considering hair loss solutions for the very first time, there's three important points to be aware of. Firstly, see your doctor as early as possible in your decision-making process. They can give an objective, medical-based opinion. And remember that early treatments often give the very best results. Second, do your research. Ask for evidence from clinical-based trials about any products or procedures that you're considering. Hair loss can involve a lot of emotional responses. Be rational in your decision-making process. Shop around, take your time, and then choose the best. And speaking of the best, Dr. Martinick has joined me to introduce her team. Jenny. Hi, Paul. Lovely to see you. And you. Sarah, you know. Welcome back. Thank and I you. Introduce you to my new associates, Dr. Zinn. How do you do? And nice Dr. Alia. And you. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Dr. Alia. Right, now let's get cracking. Let's.